Hello, I'm Philip McRae, and this is my research presentation. My question is, should sabermetrics be used to help evaluate high school baseball players? Um, this could be confusing to those that don't know what sabermetrics are. It's basically just advanced baseball statistics. I'll get further than that later. Why this topic? Coming into this semester, um, there was a little bit of pressure to do something biomed related based on like power classes. So I kind of wasn't looking at this, but uh, I was interested in coding because it's something I was looking to possibly pursue in college. And then I was also interested in baseball with playoffs coming up and everything. So when we are asked to find some research topic, you're often asked to see where your passions align and where coding and baseball align is through data analytics and looking and exploring that. Um, what's the relevancy of the data analytics and the gap? I'll start here going over this. Is Jose Altuve, he's a baseball player. He's a former MVP, so he was like the best player at his position and in this league for a while. And he's a little bit older now, but this here is a stat cast profile. It basically just shows like his metrics. Um, up here it shows his exit velocity and his arm strength, which are in the sixth and fourth percentile, which means it's really low. His arm strength is like, he throws in between 75 and 80 miles per hour from second base, which I'll get into that later why that's important, and his exit velocity is around the high 80s. And then look at this right here is the college baseball scout guidelines for a division one baseball athlete. They want, for a middle infielder, so for the L2 base position, they want a, someone in between 5'8", 6'2", and that can throw in between uh, 85, 95 miles per hour, which both aren't what L2 does. And then they show some stats at the bottom here, but they aren't the most advanced sabermetric stats, and that's where L2 base thrives, and it makes you wonder if he was in the, from the United States, he would even become a Division One athlete. And then also it shows just high school baseball, I specifically looked at Minnesota high school baseball, and while researching, I found some like historical stats. And for uh, batting average in a season, you look down here, the best um, Minnesota twin of all time is right here. Joe Maurer, a catcher, also former MVP. And it just shows how cor there's a correlation between high school baseball stats and MLB. Um, my method was a quantitative exploratory research. I where you essentially find a problem and then using quantitative data and analytics, find, um, explore a solution. The problem was that a lot of people are undervalued, a lot of shorter people that don't throw hard but can get on base, aren't looked at as good prospects for division one schools. And so then I just use that advanced analytics and a database to explore this. And so my goal is to make a database with all the Minnesota high school baseball sets from 2022 to explore sabermetrics should be used across the country for high school baseball players. For, before we get further than this, it's good to go over some terminology that is going to be brought up. Uh, most of it's stat related. The most simple type of stat is a counting stat. It's basically just when somebody does something, you just like add one to the total or something. So if you get a hit, you just keep adding one, and so that's just how many hits they have. You just keep counting. And the same thing with at bats. Then you get a little bit more complex. It's a little more averages and percentages where it is a stat that is um, mostly a division of two counting stats, such as batting average, which is just hits divided by at-bats, and it just shows percentage times someone gets a hit, and then on-base percentage is hits plus walks divided by play appearances, which just shows the percent times someone gets on base. And then to continue on to that, there's sabermetrics, which is a made-up term by someone named Billy James, and it's just essentially taking, finding the flaws in these averages stats, and them together. So the one I mostly focus on is Woba, weighted on base average. It basically says that in batting average, every hit is uh, graded equally, and just how many times you get hits. But every hit is not equal. Getting a double is worth a little bit more than getting a single. Getting a triple is worth more than getting a double. So you I have weights in Woba, so you just multiply the weight times what you got: singles, doubles, triples, and then divide them by like at bats as in our plate appearances minus intentional walks and that's how you get woven it's a little bit more accurate than batting average. For my literary analysis I analyzed two studies or yeah two studies one from the University of Wisconsin one from Syracuse I'll go over Wisconsin first it analyzed the story Moneyball which is about someone named Billy Bean 
who is the manager of the Oakland A's in 2001, which are known for being a very cheap team and spent way less money than the Yankees. So in order for them to win, they had to use advanced analytics to find the undervalued players, and they ended up breaking the streak for most games in a row at 20. And then basically, Wisconsin just like went over this and talked about how his strategy wasn't that he was using a statistic, it was that he's implying it in a way to find undervalued players. And then Syracuse, this basically um, summarizes what it is, this graphic. It just shows two players, Jonas Sustavis and Alex Rodriguez. Jonas Sustavis was making $3.7 million, and Alex Rodriguez was making $22 million in, in every set category. Jonas Sustavis is better than them. So it just shows that how we have bias on like star players, Yankee players that are normally favored, and like players on good teams, and that there's many undervalued players out there, and you can find them using Sabre metrics. So now it's time to complete my experiment. First, I had to learn how to code. Um, this wasn't actually necessary in the final, but I learned how to get proficient in spreadsheets through just doing simple tasks that I found in like school or something and transferring spreadsheets. And I also learned Python to get better at data analytics. I was originally gonna do my database through Python, but found out that um, spreadsheets is a more efficient way to do it. But I still think the problem solving techniques I learned from Python helped me in the long run. And then finally, what stats to use. I already went over this, but I use WOBA. And then there's another one that's called WRAA, weighted runs um, above average. And it is uh, the WOBA minus the league average of WOBA, um, divided by a WOBA scale, which is normally near one. In my case, it was 1.15, so it doesn't make that big a difference. But that, and then you times play appearances, and that's just part of the line, about how many runs you contributed to your team. Then find parameters. Um, there are, there were 4,513 baseball players in Minnesota in 2022, so you gotta narrow it down. A lot of them didn't have any stats on their page. So I decided that the easy one to do would just be 50 at-bats. Any of the 50 at-bats are above, I'd analyze. Then import data. I don't know, oh, there it is. Uh, just from MN Baseball Hubs where I got my data, I got mostly counting stats, a few averages, and I just imported that to my spreadsheet to help make the process easier, and did that just through copy and pasting. Then I created a database, just used my WOBA calculations and a few others, and just uh, used the uh, like spreadsheet code, which is a very primitive way of code, and to use formulas and become and make the statistics. Then it's time to analyze the data. Why I did this is I found the averages for all the stats I made, and then I just compared the averages and I used uh, conditional formatting. So. Green means that the player's above average in a stat, and red means that they're below. And then uh, I made sort buttons so you could sort it by stat. I mostly sort it by WOBA just because that was the one I was focusing on. Then finding scouting reports to see if like this should be used in metrics, you gotta look at traditional techniques. A website PBR is a traditional, more traditional techniques. They measure how fast someone throws, how fast they run, how hard they hit, and it's just like how people get sounding ports and it doesn't use really safer metrics. It's also a great source to find like what people think about a player and where they're gonna go next level. So then I used both of these to find undervalued or overvalued players. My criteria for undervalued was someone with pretty good saber metric stats um, and someone that played, they have to play pretty hard schedule or else it doesn't really um, matter that they have good stats and they have to have a decent to below average um, PBR rating. And then for overvalued, it's just basically anybody that PBR ranks have highly but has below average stats. So I players I analyzed, this one's the first one. He was actually, he's kind of on baseline. It's like the baseline D1 athlete. He's going to a very good D1 program he's playing there now. And he's you see he's green in all these stats. He is pretty good at all, he's above average all those, like very good, like those that will be level he'd be an MVP. And um he, like one of the things, 440 Wolga is like 100 above the average, and he um, contributes six runs to his teams. And then 85 in for Zillo is like what the my scouting report thing that I showed at the beginning said that uh, should like up for. And then player two is the same player on the same team. He is not going to college for baseball, and he has very similar stats, almost identical. 450 Wolga, six runs, slightly less infield below, but I mean, it's a very similar player, but for some reason there's biases in fact, and I allow him to go to the next level.
And then this is an example of an overvalued player. This guy's also going to a very good D1 program with the first guy. And he has very good outfield velo, very good exit velo, but it's very much below average every stats. And just the average um, Minnesota baseball player would have produced two more runs for his team than him. And then another um, example of an undervalued player is this guy. What really stood out to me is his K percentage, basically the amount of time he strikes out. It's 4%. Um, the best, like we've seen in the last five years in the MLB level, is 7%. So that's way below that, and it's something that just transfers next level. If you can get the bat on the ball, and normally good things happen. And it's just another undervalued player that is favored by Saber Metrics. And he had pretty good, no, um, actually, 84 and 50 was good, but he's a little bit on the smaller side, and some people don't like that, obviously, and so he's not going to D1 level. And then uh, my limitations, before that I'm talking about conclusion, and my conclusion is that I think Saber Metrics is a little bit more heavily, but they're hard to implement for players, and it's hard to uh, see how much you're going to weigh in evenly. Like, it's hard to think that you're going to take away a scholarship from a player because they had bad Saber Metrics or anything else looks good, and it's just very hard to see how much you want to implement it. And there's a few other, and then my limitations also a big part on, like, why it shouldn't be implemented too heavily. One of my limitations is, in a year, MLB player gets 657 at bats. The max at bats that someone got in Minnesota in 2022 is 100, so it takes six seasons for someone's sample size to be the same as MLB, which is kind of crazy. And then um, the stats on MLB Baseball Club, which is pretty good, is, are a little skewed because a lot of um, teams just use Game Changer, which is very hard for someone to analyze sabermetrically because it's hard to export data in mass, like, um, and then baseball hub, and it is, uh, you have to pay for it. And that is my references. Uh, how did the choices you made when designing or implementing your research method impact your research process? Yeah, well, at first when I was gonna do my research method, I was gonna do it with Python, and I was gonna make like a very advanced code database and then I realized that spreadsheets, I could basically get the same results. It would look just as nice, and it really made it easier, like a lot easier, getting my color coding and everything, and, and finding like averages made it much more visual, and I think easier for me and like the average person that doesn't know much about statistics. Okay, thanks. Uh, how does your new understanding address a gap in the scholarly conversation? Yeah, so, um, I had like kind of two answers to that. Uh, my new understanding like addresses that you can take stats and put it at like the high school level. Like as um, we go back here, uh, I had so um, WRAA basically runs runs uh, above average is in like high school you'd think it would be like way higher for or not that actually well. well you think it'd be way higher on average because it's just like easier for players and it would be more skewed. But the average actually WOBA is very um, similar to the average in MLB. And then another thing is like a thing that I uncovered is just the ethical considerations of this. Like I said before, it's hard to find just taking away scholarship because of this. And it's really hard to find like should you use it on um, do players have their rights to their own stats to withhold it from like colleges or should they have to be out there for like the sake of saber metrics, so it's hard to see what the line is you draw of how far you should go with saber metrics and implementing it. Okay. Uh, last question. Think back to your initial curiosities that sparked your inquiry. What other curiosities do you have, and how has that process prepared you to explore them? Yeah, I, um, I really just don't have enough in this research project. I really like the thought of like how just like the ethical considerations of what say metrics would be because I mean it's data you don't think there's gonna be an ethical thing with it but you really I just have to look into so I'm very curious on like researching it where is going too far and when players should be able to have a say in what they're uh, showing to colleges okay thank you another round of applause